Uh, first up, we have Josh Allen uh, finished as quarterback one last year. Alex, why don't you uh, give the give the people a little bit of stat overview? Yeah, uh, 4,500 yards, 37 passing touchdowns, 10 picks. He had a, over 100 carries, 102 for 421 on the ground, eight rushing touchdowns. He also had a receiving touchdown. Um, finished as uh, quarterback one last year, averaging just under 25 points a game. Incredible. Uh, did not lead the NFL in any individual statistics last season, despite his performance. Uh, Diggs had his best year with Allen mm. under center, and he gets to work with Brian Dable for a fourth consecutive season this year as well. Yeah. They lose John Brown, but they added Emmanuel Sanders. Um I mean, mm, you who know, cares? Yeah, right? Okay. I think he'll be serviceable. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders is good like three years ago, four years ago. He was a stud and well in San Francisco. Um, back to Josh Allen. Uh, he had a hundred plus rushing attempts and eight rushing touchdowns has a, I think a, a very delectable playoff schedule with Carolina at home at new England and home against Atlanta. Um, so when, hold on, just just real quick. When you say playoff schedule, are you saying weeks 15, 16 and 17? That's with, what I did. I'm sure okay. leagues are going to handle that extra week a little <laughs> bit differently. I'm still yep. assuming most leagues are just going to cut off that last week. So yep. when I talk playoff schedules, I'm talking weeks 15 through 17 here. Uh, and again, he faces Carolina at New England at home against Atlanta opponent pass yards per attempt. They are they last year. They finished at ninth, 24th and 28th and Carolina finished at ninth because they were 28th in opponent rush yards per attempt. So <laughs> the, you, and, we, and we know Buffalo can't run the ball like <laughs> so. All they do is throw. I think Zach so, Moss is going to be a thing this year, but we'll get to that. Um, he, is he growing on you? He a little bit, a little bit. Uh, Moss grow, growing. Oh, oh wow, oh. that's You're some welcome. really bad low hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with that's us, why ladies and gents. Yeah, that's we why people come to the sackos. Mildly right hot fantasy takes and horrible puns. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Allen, quarterback, won last year. Safe bet as the QB one uh, again this year. Um, he's our consensus here. He's my quarterback one and Alex's QB two. Yeah, I just, um, I mean, and I mentioned the, to this to you before we started recording. There's not a whole lot to argue about with quarterbacks, even though we're probably going to argue about a couple things. One of them being Mahomes here in a, in a couple minutes, but like, you know, the known commodity quarterbacks, unless you've never played fantasy football before and then by the way welcome to the party but like there's there's like a solid like seven to eight quarterbacks if you're playing a 12 team league like you're going to be fine on you're not looking for any deep sleepers of a quarterback it basically comes down to where do you want to take a quarterback in the draft uh we were just looking at our draft and the top six quarterbacks didn't end up going until the end of round eight so it's one of those things where you're going to have time to take some of these guys. Are you really going to take Josh Allen or Mahomes uh, in the first two rounds this year to get a quarterback? Maybe, but that's going to put you so far behind on other positions that it just makes sense waiting. And as we'll get into a little bit as, as we kind of go through this, there's just so many guys that are kind of clumped together from like the eight to, I mean, you could even say like 15 range that you would be just fine with having. So it's, do you want to spend to try to get a premium quarterback here when there's plenty of depth available to be very serviceable. And so I, I just kind of want to, I, I do think it's important to mention that before we kind of, you know, continue going on this, like Josh Allen. Yeah. Really good. Is he going to have his uh, eight rushing touchdowns again? Maybe probably. Right. I mean, he seems to be a guy that will take, you know, he's big enough to have the, the the carries at the goal line. I mean, he dude's a freaking monster. He had the fourth most carries in football last year from the quarterback position at 102. I mean, the only other people that were in front of him make a bunch of sense. Kyler Murray, Cam Newton, Lamar Jackson. So like they all had seven or more touchdowns. All all four of those guys. So it just makes sense that he's going to have seven touchdowns, probably from a rushing standpoint. And then 
from a passing standpoint, he's got the biggest arm in football from like a like a winging it out there perspective. They just need to put the talent around him. Stefan Diggs had a monster year last year, year two of their chemistry after having COVID year and actually having a, a training camp to work through and, and off season stuff. I, I mean, there's no reason to think that he won't be a top five quarterback as his absolute floor in fantasy. So Jason has him at one. I have him at two um, top five floor. And, you know, when you're drafting, doesn't it make a ton of sense to draft the guys with the well, And I guess this is the way I look at it. I always want the guys with the highest floor. So if you're going to tell me that a quarterback can have a top five floor. Fantastic. Like, I, I, I like it. Um, the question is, where do you take him? Um, is third round reasonable? Maybe it, it kind of depends on what your scoring is. Uh, if you have six points for a passing touchdown, that's fine. I, if that's the case, I'd probably definitely prefer Mahomes than than Josh Allen just because of the talent around him. But again, um, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. So, yeah, he's we, we have him at one overall because Jason has Mahomes so low. All right, next up, consensus number two is Mr. Patrick Mahomes posted quarterback one numbers in about 70% of his career games. Uh, Only two other quarterbacks have posted higher than 60% since 2001 is 15 game sample size, Justin Herbert. So, I mean, again, consistency, you know, he's going to finish in the top three, top five. Um, But really... And I, I know Mahomes is going to go first in the vast majority of drafts. But again, back to your point, it is what are you giving up elsewhere by drafting him? What are you giving up elsewhere by drafting Josh Allen? Um, to me, there's five guys that I would, well, four and a half, I guess. I could kind of go back and forth on Lamar. Um, but there's at least four and potentially Lamar that I would group all on the same single first tier. And I think a lot of places are actually showing those five in a single tier at the top. And if you have to spend a second round pick on Mahomes, I'd rather spend like a sixth to seventh round pick on like number five and, 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 you know, use that equity elsewhere and let somebody else spend up on these guys. But yeah, just, just real quick on Mahomes, He averaged more fantasy points per game than Josh Allen did. He was only number two or sorry. He finished the year at four last year. Uh, overall, he did not play week 17. So when we're looking at comparing the two, um, Mahomes actually averaged uh, just you know right at 25 points per game. Uh, he had 4,700 yards passing, 38 touchdowns, six picks. Uh, only had two rushing touchdowns. Um, <clears throat> so I, I love Mahomes when you have Kelsey and Hill and Hardman, um, and you know, uh, the, just the weapons around him in my mind are substantially better than what Josh Allen has. Um, and Andy Reid is still the best offensive coach in football. The only downside of this is potentially, you know, Clyde Edwards Alaire, um, year two. Um, you know, they fo- they really it, it'll be interesting to see if they're gonna run the ball a little bit more when they get to down, down to the goal line instead of doing some more of those gimmicky um passes to to Hill streaking around the edge or Hardman or or whoever. Um so I I have Mahomes at one. You have him at four. He finished at four last year again, mostly because he didn't play the last week. Um, I believe he averaged the second most uh, points per game last year in fantasy. Um, again, top five floor provided health, which I think we're all saying is the case on all of these guys. Um, is is we're assuming they're going to be healthy and playing all the games. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit because you know. Aaron Rodgers is a little different and and Deshaun Watson is a little different as well on on those two. But yeah, Mahomes, uh, pretty clear number two for us. Uh, my number one, Jason's number four. Yeah, has a pretty good uh, playoff schedule or I don't know, sort of middle of the road. Starts off with uh, at the L.A. Chargers, who were 12th in opponent yards, opponent pass yards per attempt. Then Pittsburgh at home, you know. Pittsburgh is not a team I think you want to see in your fantasy playoffs, but at home doesn't scare me as much. Yeah, Blitzburg. Um, and yeah, then well, at the Cincinnati. Sacks, I believe, right? And and Mahomes doesn't have a line either. Right. So, I mean, you, you saw what, what Tampa Bay did to them last year in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. And they didn't really make their line any better. Well, so, they, that, they drafted that, that's the a one center. cause for concern. 
They drafted a center and they signed Kyle Long. So if Kyle Long can be serviceable, I, and I, I, I don't know, it's, Kyle Long got answer. hurt already. Like, did, did he really? He? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, he tore something already. He's like, oh wow! They said he's gonna be ready for training camp, I think. But he, yeah, he are, he's already hurt. <sighs> uh, yeah, some things never change, and you know, as much as they stay the same. Um, Rough. So yeah, I, I think Mahomes is gonna have a you know top three, top five season. Lock it in. It's just the draft price one, and then I like these other guys. Well, I think. I think number three, next up, we have Dak, who averaged more than 50 pass attempts a game in the first four weeks before getting hurt in week five on pace for more than on pace for more than 800 attempts on the season. Um, (laughs) Just obscene numbers. Um, He averaged 27 fantasy points per game, which was the second most all time. Um, Just. Uh, just silly. Uh, one of the top uh, of the top eight single game performances by quarterbacks in 2020. Only one quarterback was on that list twice, and that was Dak. Um, it's 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 just going to be nuts. So I'm not really anticipating that changing. So I, I think he's still going to you know mm-hmm. be on fire. One and then two, the next group of guys that I have over Mahomes are Murray and Allen, and it's because they run. Both of them had over a hundred rushing attempts, and what seven yep. plus rushing touchdowns apiece. And if you want to talk passing, I would take Dak in that offense over Mahomes because I just game script. If Dak's going to be throwing fifty passes a week. Like, yes, I will take the volume because I don't think that their defense is going to get yep. substantially better. Granted, that's pretty much all that they drafted in Dallas, but I I would take the game script over that 100 percent. Yeah, and I think you're going to get better value for Dak anyway, right? Because he's not going to go before Mahomes in, in any draft. So there, there's that piece of it, too, right? So questionably. So when when Mahomes is going in the second, second, third round. <laughs> You know, it's do you pull the trigger on Jack in the fourth or fifth? Um, because you're like, you know, if he's going to throw for 400 yards every game, which he did uh, three out of the four games that he completed last year. Um, like that's a that's unbelievable. Now, also, let's be honest, he's coming off of something where he snapped his leg in half uh, by all accounts. His recovery went as well as could have expected. Um, but. You know, like we just saw with with uh, Conor McGregor the other day, like, you know, it, it can be weird, like leg injuries can be weird. You know, they can just snap at any time. Um, and so once it breaks, it's going to break easier, I guess. But the like just such a fluky, weird injury, too. Um, I love Dak. He, he was great last year. Um, you know, again, we, we talked about the Mike McCarthy thing last year where, you know, he had Aaron Rodgers at his disposal. And now he has all of those weapons with Cooper and, you know, Schultz and Lamb. CD Lamb and, you know, Blake Jarwin, yeah, I mean, baby. You just, go, you just go right down the. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to be able to run two tight end sets. They're going to be able to run four wide out sets like and then you still have, <clears throat> you know, one of the best running backs in football and Ezekiel Elliott back there, too. It's just going to be a really hard offense to stop. Um. So, yeah, love me some Dak. I'm a three, you have him at two. I think unquestionably the value for him um, is probably the best of these top five because I I think you might see him fall a little bit just because of injuries and him not having the the giant numbers only because he got hurt last year. Right. All right. Next up, we have Kyler Murray uh, at number four. Oh, I guess before we move on, Dak's playoff schedule at the Giants, home at, home against Washington, home against the Cardinals. Not really scary there. Washington will, I think, be threatening. Um, they were exceptional yep. on defense last year, but the other two are pretty much marquee. So, 
Uh, yep. Number four, Kyler Murray, 133 rush attempts, 800 plus yards and 11 scores on the ground. Completed uh, more than two thirds of his passes for almost 4000 yards, 26 touchdowns, 12 picks. He led the league in self caused sacks in 2012 or 2019. Excuse me. Um, when he had more than 20 in a year when he got sacked. 48 times but then last season what did they do carolina protected him better he got rid of the ball faster and he ran and he got sacked less yeah for arizona excuse me um he cut his sacks down year over year from 48 to 27 so it's good yeah really good for kyler uh and then arizona also added aj green and rondale moore they lost Kenyon drake I think that means that they end up passing more without Drake. Yeah, I don't really, I don't think James Conner is on the same level. Uh, playoff schedule at Detroit, at home against Indy, at Dallas. He had 26 plus fantasy points on eight separate occasions last year. I think he's a stud. Yeah, I, um, I guess my only concern here is do we know if Cliff Kingsbury is a good coach? Well, that's um, irregardless. He still produced with him last season, right? <clears throat> no, I, I agree with you on that. Um, but they, I feel like just watching them a couple times last year, they would just throw so many short. Like, oh, yeah, almost like their offense was just lethargic at times. And you have like one of the like more electrifying quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, maybe maybe having AJ Green helps. You know, obviously, that was the first year with DeAndre Hopkins there. Um, and and I. I will guarantee you I'm not going to have a Cardinals running back on my team because I think the Cardinals running back you want is <laughs> Kyler Murray. So the like I yeah, he's he's again, I say because of the rushing yards, top seven, top eight floor, um, you know, very similar to Lamar Jackson. Who we're going to talk about next um, where they're, he's going to run enough and scramble and be dynamic enough where the. That that he has that floor just because of the rushing yards. Injury concern is sure because he's a little smaller. Um, but other than that, like what what can you be upset about? Yeah, right. I, I, not a whole lot of argument back and forth on these guys. No, but, it's just it, it's it's OK. So Mahomes, Allen, Prescott, Murray. You'll be fine with any of the four, even with it's Lamar. just determining. Yeah, and it's it's what what do you want to do? So figure it out. You have to mock draft. We prefer sleeper uh, to to do the mock drafts. If you take a quarterback early, how does that impact your later round picks? Um, yes, I always like having the best guy at every position that I possibly can have, and I feel like you can find running backs and wide receivers on the waiver wire more likely than you can find a quarterback. So me personally, I enjoy having a good quarterback on my roster to start and I enjoy having a good tight end on my roster to start, but everybody's different. So figure out what you want to do and, and you'll be fine regardless of what you do. I promise. Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, number five, Lamar Jackson finished with fewer than 16 and a half fantasy points since taking the job in 2019, all of four times. Um, That's really consistent. Posted 21.3 points or more in 22 of 30 games he's played. They signed Sammy Hmm. Watkins and they drafted Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota with pick 27. He had 159 carries for a thousand rushing yards and seven touchdowns on the ground. 242 completions on 376 attempts for all of 2,800 yards through the air. Playoff schedule, home against Green Bay, at Cincinnati, home against the Rams. Uh, you hate to see the Rams in championship week, considering they were pretty much the, the number one defense last year. So that is unfortunate, but at least they are at home. Uh, if you do end up drafting Lamar, I will say, you know, in talking through these first five guys, I can tell you, I think that the draft order in most leagues is going to be Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, then Dak, then Lamar is how I think the order that they'll go in most drafts. I think for the value, I would probably I would be fine trying to sit and wait and target Lamar 
Um, I, he, I mean, I, he, I think he's number five Q, middle of the pack. QB one is his floor. Like if, if you can get him as the fifth QB, I think that's his floor. And he, you know, he proved two years ago that he has the ceiling to easily be QB one when he was going over 30 points in like 12 of 16 weeks. So you, you, you have no concerns about his throwing or his passing. So, so two, two years ago when he was MVP at 36 passing touchdowns, six interceptions, which is, which is obviously very good last year, 26 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Um, but he threw the ball a little bit, a little bit less, uh, cumulatively looking at, uh, attempts and completions year over year. Um, Mark Ingram's not there anymore. So you're looking more at, at Gus Bus and, and J.K. Dobbins in the backfield. Um, he had seven rushing touchdowns both of the last two years. So you basically put that in pen, provided health, that he's going to have at least seven rushing touchdowns. So. What well, you I, don't get with I passing, just, I, you make up <laughs> in yards, though. He's, he had a thousand I rushing know, I yards. Know, I know. Yeah, I, like the, that playoff schedule is awful, right? Because Aaron Donald's just going to sit on his head um, that, that entire <laughs> game. Like, that's brutal. The championship um, game, yeah. I mean, out of all of these, probably if you're looking playoff schedule, I would want Josh Allen with Carolina, New England, Atlanta. Uh, yeah. Patrick Mahomes has Pittsburgh in week 15. Dak has Washington week 15. Kyler Murray is at Detroit, Indy, and then at Dallas. And Lamar is sitting on the Rams in championship week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, just just to reiterate, it should be noted that Lamar Jackson finished as quarterback 10 last year. Um, but he did miss a couple games due to injury. Uh, I guess just one game. It was that shortened week against Pittsburgh or that, that was just weird. Um, but yeah, he's remarkably consistent. I, I feel like, you know, that was COVID, it, wasn't it? He had COVID. Did he have COVID? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he I might think it was have. a COVID the, the, absence. Yeah, but but that's one of those things where I just hate watching him throw. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like watching a a bird dying and falling out of the air. <laughs> and it's I mean, I had Marquise Brown on my team in our league of record last season. Yeah, it's and awful. Marquise Brown is not awful. I watched Marquise Brown get wide open on nine routes and on posts and corners. Yeah, that's and, fair. And Lamar missed him. Lamar just flat out missed him. And, uh, you know, and he was dinking and dunking underneath when when he was completing his passes. So. Uh, yeah, yeah it, the, it, it should be noted that, that Marquise Brown actually had double digit fantasy points. Uh, all it's, Six out of six his last six games in the regular season last year. So well, he got uh, up and screamed and said, "I need more work." Well, and they should. Yeah. So yeah, um, like again, back to Lamar. Lots of rushing. He does have a lot of carries, lots of hits on his body the last two years. So there is an injury concern. I talked about that last year. Obviously, nothing happened. Um, that's that's what you get with this, some of these rushing quarterbacks. He has more design runs than any other quarterback in the NFL. Um, again, his division, I mean, kind of saucy, right? Steelers are, are by far and away the best, uh, defense in that division. Um, but I mean, he doesn't have to face his own defense, which can be a good thing, but then you're looking at the Bengals, which, you know, the Bengals defense is terrible. Uh, the Cleveland (laughs) Browns is, is I would say upper middle pack. Uh, they, they should be pretty good this year. So, um, you know, if that's who he's got six games against. Fine. Um, but yeah, I like Lamar. I don't, you know, you just hope you wait for him to break that 80 yard run and he can do it at any time. Yes, he can. 